morning, welcome, merry new, happy day, happy new year. <laughs> Good to see you guys here. Thanks for joining us today. Happy 2023, that's right. I um, hope you guys have had a great um, end of last year and are ready to kick off the new year by praising Jesus together. Let's set our minds on him. Let's focus on who he is and what he has done for us. So please stand as we join with all creation in praising our great God.
sing together. We're going to uh, continue to kind of focus our minds as we start the year on what Jesus has done. We're going to use this as a prayer. This next song is a prayer saying, lead me to, uh, to what, is, uh, what is in your heart, Lord, and what is um, you know, the most important thing for us, and that is to come to the cross and to accept Jesus.
thank you now for the new year of 2023. And we pray that you will constantly remind us of you, that we will always look to the cross and make decisions because of you and what you have done for us on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you take your seat, let me say Happy New Year and welcome. Anybody stay up after midnight? Whoa, you're here. (laughs) Praise God. Well, I watched the nine o'clock fireworks. (laughs) And uh, then we decided we would lay in our recliners and uh, watch a little bit more. And then by about 9.30 we went, nah, it's bedtime. So we went to bed. Well, welcome today to the first day of 2023. And as you have noticed, kids are in today. So kids, welcome to church this morning. Um, And they're going to be in with us today. And we have some packs for them, which um, we would really like for them to collect after prayers. Okay? Now, mums and dads, just so you know, the packs, we're we're doing a series um, that starts today on the Sermon on the Mount. And we have a booklet for them called Be Attitudes. Just want to say play on words there. Um, But inside here... We do have a chatterbox that they can make, so there is scissors up the back. So I just want to say to parents, some of your children will have scissors, so I'm not responsible today. (laughs) You are. Um, And they're up the back, so there's a chatterbox in there. There's also colouring in from the really young ones to the old ones, and um, also uh, down in Explorers, the room is set up, but no teachers there. So if you do need to take your child down there for a little bit of a break, you can, but you're also most welcome to be in here the whole time. All right? So Happy New Year, everyone, and first service for 2023, which is really exciting. If you're new and visiting, we would love for you to fill out um, our Connect card just so that we can spam you, no, so that we can get to know you and find out, you know, exactly what you would, you need and what, how we can help you. So the Connect cards are up the back in the box up there. So if you can fill them out if you're new or visiting, we would love to get to know you. All right. We are just going to have a look at a, um, a video and this video talks about how we can give to our wonderful God. Um, So if you can just have a look. Spend some time praying now, so if you could yeah, join with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, thank you for who you are. We give you praise for you are a fa- for, for you are faithful and full of mercy. You are slow to anger and quick to forgive. You weep for those who reject you and are joyful when they repent. You are kind and generous and you give us all we need. You listen to us when we cry out. And you speak to us through your word so that we may know you. And yet, Father, we don't honour you like you deserve. We have sinned against you and the people in our lives in the things we've done and said and thought. And so, Father, we're sorry. We're sorry for all those times we've failed to live up to your standards. Please forgive us. Help us to repent and to live for you. Help us as we navigate this broken and confused world to stand firm in you, loving you and loving our neighbours. And Lord, as we head into 2023, we reflect on the year that has been and give you praise for all the ways you have grown us and shaped us and used us for your glory over the past 12 months. Thank you for the new people we have had the joy of welcoming through our doors, for the gift of new life, for faithful teaching, for meals shared, for relationships forged, for fun had and for faith shared. This year has not been without its challenges and hardships, but you are with us through all seasons of life. And we thank you for your unchanging and steadfast love for us. And as we think and plan and pray about the year ahead, please give us the humility to learn from our mistakes, knowing that in you we have forgiveness. Please give us the courage to turn from things that don't serve us or you anymore 
and the grit to be faithful in prayer or Bible reading, in turning up or in faithfully serving you this year. Help us to make a fresh commitment to you and take a next step, whatever that might, may be for each of us, to become more like your son, Jesus. And for us as a church, Lord, we think particularly of Dan as he settles into being rector next, uh, this year. We are thankful for his leadership over the past few years and pray that you would grant him wisdom and an ever-deepening love for you and your people as he takes on this new role. And we also bring you before you our plans to start youth ministry this year. Please give patience, creativity, and a genuine heart for the lost to all of those involved as they seek to share the good news of Jesus with the high schoolers in our area. And thinking of our wider world, we bring before you our link missionaries and fam families and organizations. We pray particularly for the Vergeses as they prepare to head to the seashells at the end of the month. Please give them a smooth transition overseas, help them to settle in quickly and form meaningful relationships with those around them. Would you use them as your faithful servants to build up the people of the Seychelles in the gospel? And Lord, we pray to you for Lorian and Ben and their family as they navigate the complexities of overseas governments and visas. Please be close to them in this uncertain time and surround them with your comfort. And ultimately, Lord, we pray that you would pave the way for them to get back home so they may continue to share the love and good news of Jesus and give hope to those who don't yet know you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this is the time for the kids to go up the back and get their um, activity books. And if you'd like to just turn and say hi to someone close to you and then Sarah will be up and do the Bible reading. Hello, there you go. Um, whilst the last kids get their activity booklets, we're going to go into a time of Bible reading. So today's reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. So Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Chris. That is very kind of you. Uh, Happy New Year. Again, it is good that you're here. We had 8 a.m. church this morning, and uh, it was early. It was extra early this morning. Uh, it's a real joy that you're here. My name's Miles, if we haven't met before. I'm one of the ministers here at Life Anglican Church, Riverston. And it has, look, it just feels like a while since I've preached. You know, I, I haven't preached since last year. All right. Oh, thank you. There's no more. Just one. And what a great way 
for us to start the year together. Here at church, gathering together here at church, singing together, praying together, hearing God's word read and explained, community together, coffee together. Every Sunday is a good Sunday to be at church. There's just something extra nice about meeting together on New Year's Day. And I wonder, I wonder what kind of change you might be hoping for this year. You know, as you consider last year, whether that's yesterday or the whole year, what, what needs to tweak, what needs to shift, or perhaps what needs to do a whole 180? Because for some of us, maybe you have a New Year's resolution. Maybe. And today's the first day. Maybe, you know, your plan is to spend time in the Bible every day, whether it's a chapter or a verse, something like that. Maybe the plan is to get to the gym or to put more veggies in your dinner or to water the plants that have suffered under your waterless tyranny. <laughs> or maybe for your coriander plant, the plan is to set it on fire and desecrate the ashes, uh, of course. Maybe the plan is to start yoga or to drink like two litres of water a day. Or maybe there's a section in your day that you're going to put your phone away. You're not going to look at your phone. Or maybe you're going to learn guitar or the ukulele or knitting or frisbee. Maybe the plan is to invest in a relationship in a specific way. You know, you're going to get better with quality time or with listening, something like that. Maybe the plan is to pray. Every day, you know, you've got the journal or you've got the app set up, ready to go, and it's time to stop with the excuses and just to get on with it. And I'm sure there's heaps more. Many ideas for you. So maybe you have some specific resolutions. Maybe you don't. Regardless, as we ponder the last year, it's just healthy to look back at the highs and the lows and to just kind of consider what change do we want to see this year? I've got an idea for you, one for your consideration. What if this year you want to be more happy, more satisfied, more filled up with joy? That sounds like something that we could get behind, right? Or to use another word, what if this year you want to be blessed? That's a word we've already heard a lot as Sarah read out Matthew chapter 5. Because to be blessed means to be blessed satisfied, to be happy, to be filled up with joy from God, to receive God's favour. And in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus not only tells us what this blessing looks like, but how we can receive it. And so whoever you are, whatever you think about all this Jesus stuff, if you're a Christian or not yet a Christian, if you want to find satisfaction in life, if you want to be fueled by joy, then Jesus reveals the answers in Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to see it together. Now, because we're going to look over at Matthew over the next few weeks, it's important for us to spend a little bit of extra time today just in the context, making sure we know what's going on. And for that, you're going to need your Bible. And so uh, if you've got your Bible there, Matthew chapter 5 is where we are. If you're joining us today for the first time, you were given a Bible on your way in, page 519. I'm pretty sure that's right. I remembered it right. 519. Because I need you to see some words and see some patterns. So grab your Bible and head to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Chapter 4, verse 23. As you find that, uh, Matthew's telling the narrative about Jesus' life. And so far in chapters 1 to 4, Jesus was born and has grown up and was baptised. And then chapter 4, verse 23. Here it is. I'll read it out. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. So basically, Jesus is going to teach and preach and heal, and they're all kind of signposts pointing towards God's kingdom. He's going to show everyone what God's kingdom is like. That's his plan. Now, just keep that in mind. Now turn your Bible to chapter 9, verse 35. A few pages over or a few swipes over. Chapter 9, verse 35. And I'm not going to read it just yet. I want you to see it first. What do you notice? Chapter 9, verse 35. Have a quick skim. 
I'll give you I'll give you five seconds to have a skim. All right, let me read it. Chapter 9, verse 35. Here's, here's what it says. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. What do you notice? It's pretty much exactly the same, isn't it? It's pretty much exactly the same as chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus is teaching and preaching and healing all kind of signposts to God's kingdom. Now, whenever you read in the Bible and something like this happens, there's like a repeated phrase, that's, that's significant. The author is showing us something. And I think here, the author Matthew is using a technique called an inclusio. Oh, that's a fun word, isn't it? An inclusio. An inclusio is basically just like a word sandwich or, or a word KFC zinger burger. We'll go with that one. So Matthew's using a KFC Zinger burger. In this Zinger burger, it's delicious, the bread, the top and the bottom is chapter 4, verse 23, and chapter 9, verse 35, those verses that we just read out. That's the bread. This is about God's kingdom. That's what's happening. That's the bread. And the filling, all the stuff in the middle, the Zinger fillet, the lettuce, the sauce, all the good stuff, that's all chapters 5 to 9. All the chapters between those two verses. And all those chapters, chapters 5 to 9, they're kind of like an example, a taste, a glimpse of what God's kingdom is like. And so let me rephrase this to make sure we've got it on our head. Jesus is going everywhere, teaching and preaching and healing. That's, that's the bread. And then all in the middle, chapters 5 to 9, here's what it looks like when Jesus goes around teaching and healing and preaching. That's an inclusio. And here's why it's just, it's important for us to notice stuff like this. Here's why. We, we cannot just accept one thing that Jesus does or says in like Matthew chapter 5, but then reject a different thing that he does or says in Matthew chapter 8. The whole burger is designed to be eaten together. It's all one thing. That's how Matthew, the author, designed it. For example, we cannot say, ah, yes, Jesus, preach. Um, blessed are the peacemakers. Love your enemies. Don't get angry. All the good stuff. I love the ethical teaching of Jesus. But all this weird stuff in chapter 8, like him healing the leper and calming the storm, I'm not interested in that. All this supernatural stuff. Like we can't say that. Because of this zinger burger. And in the other way as well, we can't say, oh, Jesus, I love the way that you love and care for the sick and you healed the leper and you calmed the storm in chapter 8, you did all these miracles. But all this stuff in chapter 5, who are you to tell me how to live my life? Why should I listen to you about divorce or lust or anger or how I should treat my enemies? That's what we can't say. We can't have half of Jesus. We cannot just love Jesus' miracles and ignore his teaching, and we can't love his teaching and ignore his miracles. And Matthew, the author, he makes sure that we know that by using this inclusio, this zinger burger. And so as we work through Matthew over the next few weeks, this is what we need to keep in mind. We cannot have half of Jesus. We can't just take the bits that we like and then just leave the rest behind. If you only accept half of Jesus, you haven't accepted Jesus at all. Now, it's good that we spent that extra time just setting this up, setting this series up, but let's now focus a bit more on chapter 5, the Beatitudes. So Jesus is on the mountain, and he's teaching his disciples, and it's clear that the crowds are listening as well, and te Jesus teaches these eight Beatitudes. And again, this is a great time to have your Bible open because there's something very exciting in this passage. And I wonder if you noticed it. In this passage, there is a second KFC Zinger Burger, a second Inclusio. It's right there. Look at verse 3. How does verse 3 end? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then look at verse 10. How does verse 10 end? 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we said this already, when an author repeats something in the Bible, something significant is happening. And again, I think this is another inclusio, another zinger burger. Verses 3 and 10 are the bread. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. And what, you know, what does the kingdom of heaven look like? What does it mean, the kingdom of heaven? Well, we look at all the filling, all the stuff in the middle, verses 4 to 9, the other Beatitudes. If you want to know what the kingdom of heaven is like, what it brings about, here it is, verse 4. What does it say? God's kingdom brings comforts. Verse 5, it brings inheritance of the earth. Verse 6, it brings about this fulfilling justice and righteousness. Verse 7, it brings about mercy. Verse 8, it brings us near to God so we can see him. And verse 9, God's kingdom draws us into his family. And again, we know all of this is linked. We know that's all talking about God's kingdom because of the Zingerberger, because of the inclusio. That's why this kind of thing is so important to notice. And so then this is the kind of satisfaction that Jesus offers. This is what it means to be blessed. If you want to be blessed this year, this is what it means. We can have entry and adoption into God's kingdom where there is comfort and inheritance and satisfaction and mercy and where we can see and know and be with God. That's how we're blessed. And that already sounds so good, but it just gets even better. Because here in Matthew 5, Jesus isn't just talking about the future, the future reality. This is something that we get to experience now. You might have noticed as the passage was read out, did you notice the change in tense in the Beatitudes? Have a look. What does it say? Verses 4 to 9, the filling of the burger, that's all future tense. But verses 3 and 10, what do they say? There's is the kingdom. Not there's will be. There's is the kingdom of heaven right now. And so in the same way that Jesus showed everyone a glimpse, a taste of God's kingdom as he taught and preached and healed, so too do we experience a taste of God's glorious future kingdom. All these things that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 5, you know, that's not just our future. When Jesus returns and God's kingdom will come about fully, no, no, we get to experience them now as well. One of the best parts of being a minister here is that I get to share the gospel with high schoolers. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. And one of the questions that I hear a lot from high schoolers, and maybe you've heard this question too, is this. Why now? Why should I become a Christian now? Can't I just do all the fun stuff that I want to do and then just become a Christian later so that I can go to heaven and then do all the fun stuff? It's a good question, right? You know, high schoolers are smart and can think deeply and ask good questions. And maybe you've thought of this question too. The answer is simple. Following Jesus doesn't drain the fun out of life. It's the opposite. Following Jesus fulfills and satisfies and brings about joy now. Not in the same way that like the world would suggest or our culture would suggest. But they don't know what they're talking about, right? The, the world, the culture gets this stuff wrong all the time. They're like, do this and you'll be happy. Own this, experience this, try this, buy this, listen to this, vote for this, whatever, and you'll be happy. It's never true. It never lasts and everyone knows it. Only Jesus brings about real, joyful, satisfying life to the full, both now and into the future. And so what I say to my high schoolers and what I say to you today is you should follow him now. And so the blessing that Jesus talks about, it's not just for the future, it's for now as well. So here's where we're at. Again, New Year's Eve yesterday, maybe you've fallen asleep. So if you got just like distracted or had a nap and you need to recalibrate, here's the summary so far. Here's where you can refocus. 
here's what here's what's happened. When Jesus teaches the Beatitudes, he's teaching about what God's kingdom is like. And he teaches that God's kingdom will bring about comfort and inheritance of the earth and satisfying justice and righteousness and mercy and a close relationship with God. And again, not just in the future, but now as well. And so then the last question that we need to ask and answer is this. What do we need to do to receive this blessing? That sounds pretty amazing. What do we need to be like to enter God's kingdom? Well, the answer is in Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to spend the rest of our time just discovering it together. So, again, have your Bibles open. It's better if you can see this. We have our eight Beatitudes. The first four are about the relationship between people and God. And we'll look at those first. Verse 3. Who is the kingdom of heaven for? What does it say? It says the poor in spirit. That's who it's for. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Well, this probably doesn't come as a surprise, but all this stuff that Jesus is saying is based on language from the Old Testament. Jesus isn't really saying anything new here. He's just summarizing what God has already said before. And in the Old Testament, to be poor doesn't mean just like lacking money or lacking stuff. What it means is, more often what it means is, the poor person is unable to save themselves. The poor person can only look to God for salvation. If you're taking notes, this is Isaiah 61.1 and Psalm 40 verse 17. You can see that there. And so to be poor in spirit is to acknowledge just total spiritual poverty, total spiritual bankruptcy before God. Because our sin, our rejection of God and his standards, like that's just shattered our relationship between us and him. And we are unable to fix it. We're unable to save ourselves. We are poor. And we can only turn to God and ask him to fix it. Which is something he offers to do through the death and resurrection of Jesus. He offers to fix that relationship and save us by offering Jesus to take that punishment that we deserve. And so then, what do we need to be like to enter God's kingdom, to receive all the blessing that we've talked about? Well, the first thing to say is we need to be poor in spirit. We need to recognize and acknowledge our spiritual bankruptcy before God. Before God, I am helpless. That's poor in spirit. But it's more than that. Because then this idea is expanded in verses 4 to 6. Verse 4, who will be comforted in the kingdom of heaven? What does it say? Those who mourn. Well, mourn what? Those who mourn what we just said from verse 3. Those who mourn their own spiritual poverty. That's the thing we just talked about. Not only do we need to acknowledge that we are poor in spirit, verse 3, but we need to mourn it. We need to, to feel the weight of how our sin impacts God and ourselves and others. But this doesn't mean that we kind of wallow in sorrow because what does the verse say? We will be comforted. We are comforted right now. God promises to forgive our sin today if we turn and follow Jesus. And we need to feel the weight of our sin. Verse 5, who will inherit the earth? What does it say? The meek, that is the gentle, the humble, the considerate. For it is only the humble who can honestly look at themselves and turn to God in their helplessness. 
And when Jesus returns and brings about God's kingdom, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And those who turn to God will inherit the earth. That's what it means. And they will live with God for eternity. Isn't that one just fascinating, right? Like, what does our world say about who possesses the earth? The rich, the strong, the leader, the confident. No, it will be the meek, the gentle, the humble. And verse 6, who will be satisfied? What does it say? Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who want justice. Those who look around and see the impact of sin and just want it to end. Who ask God for it to end. You know, come Lord Jesus, please. And so putting verses 3 to 6 together, who is the kingdom of heaven for? Well, it's for those who recognize their spiritual poverty, verse 3, who mourn it and feel its weight, verse 4, who stand before God with humility, with meekness, verse 5, and who hunger and ask for justice, verse 6. I mean, in other words, the kingdom of heaven is for those who put their faith in Jesus, right? For those who acknowledge their sin and who ask Jesus to forgive them and who from that moment on live with Jesus as king. That's who the kingdom of heaven is for. So what about the last four then? The last four Beatitudes, verses 7 to 10. If verses 3 to 6 focused on the relationship between people and God, Verses 7 to 10 focus on the relationship between people and people. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. That one makes sense. Those who show mercy. Those who show grace. In the same way that Jesus has shown us mercy and grace. In the same way that Jesus has, has treated us better than we deserve. So too are we to show that same mercy and grace to others. Not because doing that will save us, that's already clear, but we do that in response to what Jesus has already done. Christians, those who are shown mercy and grace through Jesus, we are to themselves, ourselves, show mercy and grace to others. That's just what we do. Christians show mercy. Because we know that they're sinners. We know that they're helpless, just like us. What might it look like this year for grace and mercy to increase in your life in 2023? One area I think it's worth just considering is, is in our language. You know, the way that we speak and listen, the words that we choose to say, being slow to anger. How might we increase in grace and mercy this year. I'm sure you can think of other ways as well. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. That is, those who display this mercy and grace, not just on the outside, not just externally, but from the inside, from the heart, truthfully, without falsehood. Again, in the same way that Jesus loves and is concerned for every person, internally and externally, so too are we to genuinely love and be concerned for others. Not just on the outside, not superficially, but from our heart. And just like Jesus spoke the truth in love, that's us too. That's what we're going to do. Christians love others and tell others the truth. That's what we do. And so what might it look like for you this year, 2023, to to show genuine love for someone or tell someone the truth? Here's an idea. Telling someone the truth of the gospel. That's loving someone. That's telling the truth, right? If we genuinely love people and we want to tell them the truth, then surely we need to share the reality of the gospel with them. The eternal reward of what it looks like to follow Jesus and the eternal consequences of what it looks like to reject him. What might it look like for you this year? I'm sure you can think of other ways as well. 
Verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers. That is those who make peace. Peace in our homes, in our church, in our relationships, our communities, our country. That kind of peace. Because God has granted us eternal peace between us and him, that peace is to then flow out of us to others. And because God has reconciled us to him, so too are we to try and reconcile with others. Again, not because this saves us in some weird way, but because of what Jesus has done, in response to what Jesus has done. Christians bring peace. That's what we do. So what might it look like for you to bring peace in 2023? Like to bring peace to conflict in school or at uni or at work or at home? Like is there a relationship that has been cracked or severed that you need to try and reconcile? That's one idea. I'm sure you could think of lots of others as well. How will you bring peace this year. And finally, verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. If we follow Jesus, we will be persecuted. That's a promise. If we're part of God's kingdom, we will be persecuted. If we display any flavor of these beatitudes, we're going to be persecuted. And man, is that just so good for us to know. It's so good for us to know because whatever happens, this is what it means, whatever happens, regardless of any circumstances, ours is the kingdom of heaven. That's always true. Whatever happens, whatever the circumstances, we will receive comfort and inheritance and satisfying justice and mercy and a close relationship with God. That is going to happen both now and in the future. And there's nothing that can, like, take that away from us. There's no power mighty enough or, or an argument clever enough. There's nothing that can take it away. Whatever happens, regardless of circumstances, ours is the kingdom of heaven. Verses 7 to 10. Well, that's what it looks like for our relationships between people. We've covered a lot of ground today. And there's lots more to say, but... Time to finish up. And so here's what we said at the start. Do you want to be blessed in 2023? Like, do you want to be satisfied and filled with joy and receive God's favour? It's all found in God's kingdom, both now and in the future. And so then the question we asked was this, what do we need to do? What do we need to do to receive this blessing? The answer is, Trust and follow Jesus. Accept his invitation into God's kingdom and with his help to live out God's kingdom. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5. And we ask that we wouldn't forget what we have heard and considered and felt today as your word was explained. And we pray that as we do get into this new year, that we would be blessed as people who live in your kingdom and as people who live out your kingdom. And we pray these things for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thanks, Miles. We've just uh, been thinking a bit about how life is better with Jesus. Um, so we're going to stand and sing as re in response to that.
thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can come this morning and have the 1st of January as the first service in this building. And Lord, we just pray that um, you'll just be with those in our as family and friends and us as we travel over the next few weeks. Lord, that you'll just keep us safe. And we pray for this week, that this week will just be a week where we just put you foremost in front of everything that we do. In Jesus' name. 
Well, we are going to continue to get to know each other a bit more and fellowship. Coffee Machine is up and running, which is awesome. Haven't had a coffee yet this morning, so looking forward to that. And morning tea as well. So hang around and we'll see you again next week.